if you're on social media and you're scrolling and you don't even know why you're scrolling, like you don't even know what you're looking for, your dopamine system has been tapped out and you need to take a break from it. Maybe a couple hours, maybe a couple of days. I think social media is great. I teach science on social media. I see you all the time on social media. You know, we, there's a lot of great social interaction. There's a lot of opportunity to learn and see things. Some are funny, some are interesting. But when you're at the point where you're engaging in something and you don't even know what the win is, but you find yourself reflexively engaging in it, your dopamine system is now plummeting. And that's a serious issue. The, the dopamine system is what got you started with the phone. But the reason you scroll is not for more dopamine. It's because you are, you're, it's because you're seeking that big dopamine peak. You don't, it's subconscious, but that the amount of dopamine that you're getting from any individual post is tiny, 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 tiny. And then it's more about just trying to get back to baseline. So I say, so when you, at first, any activity that's fun, you get this huge peak and then a trough, and then it comes back to baseline. But if you engage in that activity too often, the way that the dopamine system is arranged is eventually you're just engaging in that activity to just be okay. You're just fighting for normal fighting for neutral, as I, as I call it. And that's, that's addiction. That's compulsive use of something in order to just feel okay. That's not pleasure. There are other examples of this where um, are a little more um, unfortunate. Uh, pornography is a really good example. There's a huge issue now, right? Because pornography is so much more readily available on the internet. Now let's just remove the kind of um, the moral uh, judgments about it, right? Because that's not what this is about. A scientific discussion about this would say that there's an enormous availability and range of imagery that's very powerful that feeds directly into the dopamine system. And a lot of people, young people who are growing up watching a lot of intense pornography are suffering from a lot of sexual side effects and uh, struggles with sexual interactions in real life because those interactions are not as intense as the things that they're seeing. I suggest people avoid layering dopamine. You know, you have one dopamine system that fortunately can be activated by a lot of different things. So for instance, I love the feeling of being completely rested, going into the gym, or going for a run mid-morning after a cup of coffee, hydrating well, using the bathroom, listening to my favorite music on a sunny day. But that's a lot of things layering in for dopamine. And what happens is that if that becomes your hope and expectation, fine. But if that becomes your requirement for actually having a great run or workout, you're in trouble because the next time you're, it's not going to be that exciting and you're not going to be that motivated. You actually won't perform as well. So this year, what I've been doing is every third or fourth workout or so, I think kind of randomly, I leave my phone in the car. I don't use any music and I don't allow myself any kind of pre-workout stimulant. So I have to generate all the force and energy and everything I'm going to do from internal processes. And you might say, well, that's kind of masochistic. Why would you do that? It's supposed to be fun. Well, I'll tell you, when the next time when you bring your headphones and you're listening to music, you feel like a god in there. What the re Why? Because you are secreting so much more dopamine, so much more noradrenaline, so much more effective at performance. But then the next time you have to throttle it back. And so I'm excited by all the tools that are out there, all the, you know, I, there's all this like cognitive enhancement stuff and people are in, you know, plugging into every device and they're trying to figure out do I have white noise in the background or metronomes and all that stuff. But it's good to not layer in too many things. I try and not look at my phone for the first hour that I'm up. Usually I only make it about 30 minutes while I go do my, my walk. Um, I want to download whatever process, you know, processing I did in sleep and write a few things down. The phone isn't sinister. It's our overuse of it that's sinister.